What we've done so far, we actually set up our Adobe Animate Canvas. This white area is known as the stage. Our stage, remember, is 800 pixels wide by 600 tall, and it's 24 frames per second. So that is how we measure how fast our animation actually moves. Then what we did is we took all those images, we saved all those sound files, we imported them over here into our library. So you can see all of my images came through. They kept their file names, so as long as I label them appropriately, everything is going to be located right here inside my library area. The next step that I do, that I have to do, is now I'm going to start bringing in all of my files into the stage area. And I want to animate them. So I'm going to start first with layer one. One of the things that I'm doing this summer is I'm spending time down at Duke University. I do some work with the engineering department there. So that's why I have an image of Duke right over here, Duke campus saved in my library. So before I even bring this into my animation workspace, I'm going to go ahead and label my layer one as Duke. So you can see that my layer is labeled just like in Photoshop or Illustrator, you label those layers the same way. And right now there's just a simple blank keyframe inside there. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my Duke image into my canvas area and I can resize, I can rotate however I want. Don't forget if you hold on shift, it constrains it. If I don't hold on shift, when I scale it, it may be tall and skinny or maybe short and fat. So holding down that shift key is going to constrain your image. And the way I want this image to come in, I'm going to have to start over here on the left hand side. So I don't want it in my stage yet because your stage is like your final movie. So I'm going to have it over here on the left hand side. Now in order to add any animation to this or any movement, notice in my timeline, there's just one keyframe there, keyframe one. So I must activate this. I must tell this that, hey, I want you to animate. So in order to animate this, I must right click in that keyframe and I'm going to choose create motion tween. Kind of easy to remember. I want motion behind my clip, so I want to make a motion tween. And it's going to come up with a little warning message. I'm going to go ahead and just hit don't show again. And you'll see that it gives me a predetermined amount of keyframes inside there. So my playhead here now went from keyframe 1 to like keyframe 25. So what I'm going to do is move my playhead all the way here at the end. And then I'm going to select that picture of Duke. And I want to bring this in and have it come somewhere right here in the middle of my stage. And you'll see what happens is when it goes from playhead 1 to playhead keyframe 25, my image now moves into the middle of the stage. But I want it to hang out there. I want it to hang out there for probably maybe another 50 keyframes. So we'll say at keyframe 75. So I'm going to select keyframe 75. I'm going to go up to my insert menu. I'm going to go to my timeline. I'm going to add a keyframe right inside there. So right now my image is going to come in and it's just going to hang out there until frame 75. So let's take a look at what's going on. My Duke image comes in, it's hanging out, and then I want it to leave now. So I want it to exit my movie. So we'll say it maybe frame 120. I'm going to go ahead, insert timeline, go down to keyframe, and I want this to come downward. So I'm going to have my graphic just kind of come downward to exit the stage. So let's take a look. My image comes in, it hangs out, and then it's going to exit downward. So there's my first image that I brought in. Now guys, I got nine more to go. So what I want to do is just lock my Duke layer so I don't accidentally mess with it. And I'm going to go ahead and make another layer. And I'll do Crystal Beach next. So I'm going to go ahead. Again, yep, kind of tells me I'm about to animate something. So Crystal Beach, I'm going to have that come in at frame 120. So I come up to Insert Timeline Keyframe. I'm going to bring in my Crystal Beach image. I have a couple images here. But I think the one that I want is... Let's see here. Yeah, I'll go with this one. This is a nice one. So I'm going to bring Crystal Beach in. I'm going to get it resized the way that I want it. Don't forget to push shift. Crystal Beach is going to come in. 
But now I have it down here. I must right click and I must make a motion tween because I want to have that move. Motion means move. So it's going to come in at frame 120 and we'll say at maybe frame 160. So I go to insert timeline, go to keyframe. So at frame 160, I want that to come in and just kind of hang out right there in the middle of my stage. So let's take a look at what happens. There's my Duke image, goes down, Crystal Beach comes in, comes over, and it's gonna hang out. That's gonna hang out for probably, let's have that hang out for about 50 frames. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert timeline. Well, I'm just gonna do an auto save, thank you. Insert timeline keyframe. So it's gonna hang out there, and then I'm gonna have it exit by frame 270, insert timeline keyframe, and I'm gonna have that exit upward. But when I exit upward, I'm gonna have it do a little spin, and I'm gonna have it get really small. So let's take a look at what I have. Here's my do graphic, and then here's Crystal Beach hanging out there, and then it's gonna move upward and kinda of do a spin away. So then I can lock that layer, make my new layer, bringing image 3, image 4, image 5, all the way up to image 10. Anybody have any questions? All right. Let's go ahead, guys. Let's get to work.